thought about doing some or other think about research thinking thinking about every day how to address a problem statement that i get at least at least go for a kaggle competition or something just start exploring something new every day and 5 months is not a nominal period to even become an engineer i will be very frank with you so if you are doing that you are one of the most genius minds that everybody can listen to but you know as we have also gone through that hardship and we have also learned the hard way that's what really made us fascinated about like okay this is what i need to do and this is what i need to really understand tomorrow so this is where i give a brief intro about like what is this data science how is it being approached in industry how is it being approached in research and also a lot of startups have also popped up and i've seen a lot of startups which have inculcated this culture into their work environment or the ecosystem so let's just start with it so data scientist job is typically to work on this and there is one more field called as data engineering which is a different level of approach that is given when there is a problem statement given to them like there are advanced topic than what this is all about but data scientist is something which was hyped so what i thought was like let me just give you a clear cut clarity of what it is all about you can add tensor flow if you want but every framework does the same old neural network architecture to be plotted and i don't think so that i can give it in a one hour of time but i'll make sure that i'll give an intro about everything that has been told here except this part because it's a different explanation that is required here so the content is always about doing an introduction and giving some reality check to you because what should be your mindset when you are basically studying something for let it be deep learning data science or anything what should be your mindset so I, i've seen lot and lot of engineers who popped up with great approaches and i've read so many case studies and i feel that one, i can give some talk and i can really nurture the future budding data scientists i think so but this is what i'll be talking about so it's a pathway for you to achieve what you have desired so now introduction to data science is a study that makes a huge venn diagram with multidisciplinary approach like trust me it's this it's simple as that it's not hacking skills hacking is not about computer being stashed with some viruses or trojan hacking is also about uh, getting right tools getting right frameworks getting a right approach to solve this present world problem that's where hacking skill comes into the picture you say hackathon right you if you have attended more than 10 hackathons you are a hacker and if you have organized 10 you are you are a hacker so yeah and it's all about like where you get the data how do you source it how do you actually pre process it everything i'll say in the future so it's all a very big approach so it makes a big venn diagram with a small chunk of every part but it requires all the engineers that i'm talking here so there is an engineer where network engineer comes into the picture there is a software architect which comes into the picture and there is a solution architect and a quick disclaimer if you think that this is something beyond it don't worry just make a point of what i'm saying everything will be in in your hand because that's what we also did we also went to a lot of talks a lot of we met a lot of engineers a lot of people and then we asked what's your approach and they told me this and i'm also saying you the same thing so it's a feel to study and info from data trust me it's also about like you have an you have an entire architecture in front of you like let me just say your home when will it fall that can be a data like you can think of hundreds of houses which have fallen down because of tsunami or something you can you can take those data start inferring from it and the only thing that you can't do with the data science is you can never predict when as the world, when will the earth end because there is no plausibility of even thinking about it so if you are thinking like i will predict when will the earth end sorry for it it's not going to happen so let me just introduce you some more words which is like uh i can say probability 
this is where you always work towards your machine learning problems. Everything is always focused on this. So probability is an occurrence of event. So machine learning is something which is going to say you something is probable. So possibility is something which is so cool. And uh, this is where we are trying to move towards. And I don't think so. Another 10 years, you're going to think about this possibility from an uh, deep learning or a machine learning perspective because huge and huge tons and tons of data set is required. So there is also something called as plausibility. This is where all your machine learning algorithm focuses on it. When it says 90%, 92%, 99.9% .9 accuracy, that's not enough to the industry's perspective. This is what you measure. Plausibility of occurrence of an event. Let me just say you have a very fat skin and you have a very uh, high blood pressure and you are always getting tired after walking for a distance. Then obviously you have diabetes. I don't have diabetes. That's a different story. But plausibility of that, yes, this man might have diabetes is something that you measure. And this intent, that's what you call limit X tending to zero or infinity. Your, your mathematics that you learned in your young age will come into the picture here. So that's what it is all about. So you try to make some inference using this data. And this possibility, probability, plausibility is what you map towards. And when you think of this field, you're thinking of making an inference using a compute because a human can get tired, but never a machine. Machines are built to compute and they just do the computation. But there are different factors in which data science has been involved in different ways. Like I can say you this system. Sorry, I don't know why this. I just want to move to this. Uh, this is a way back machine that I'm talking about. This is one of the hackers tool and this is no big deal. Everybody has an access to it. This is web.archive.org. You guys can go there, check out what is happening. You are not hacking a website here. Trust me, you're not hacking a website. Let me just show you how technology is so disruptive today. You know, this is where your google.com has been. I wanted to see how does this google.com look like. And I wanted to, I will show other dates also. Today, like, let me just show you one. At 11.42.09, there was an commit. And to be very frank with you, when you go to a big scale system like Amazon, Google, or AW, or any of the big companies that you're thinking about, every single day, they measure around billions and billions of parameters which can be analyzed by a human being. What these kind of systems are doing is, is just giving you a brief introduction. This is no big deal. But when you think of such kind of an hefty algorithms being stashed onto one computer, like cloud is one such big thing. When you think of that, this is where all of your commits come into the picture. And you can think of something like uh, someday like 2001, how did it look like? And I want to see how did this, come up and how was it looking? And if you go here and check amount of commits which happen in these kind of companies, it's so huge. And I think probably you guys can go and check one of this. Like it's all available on the internet. So you guys can check out any of the things. Like I'll show you one example. I think I did for an ML.org. This is actually a place where you can really explore what is happening. So I wanted to see how does this website completely look? because this was a very recent website when you can see. And this is how it is. So if it's complex, it's complex. So if I say you some more examples, you can look at something like Hotjar. Hotjar is actually a tool where you can think of uh, uh, the user experience. How many times this customer clicked on the entire website. So this is how the data will be. This is the very robust form of data that you can ever imagine. And this is all is required for a company to analyze, okay, our customers are popping here. 
our customers are seeing all these kind of contents. This is where you your data science comes into the picture. So it just uses computer for the inference. So when you think of this field, you can think and make use of an advanced technique and also you can give your approach also. So research is something which is very cool these days because research has a very big in initiative for all the new algorithms that you're looking or else all the new things. And trust me, the first step for any research is respect. You have to respect that it's complex. You have to respect that it's getting worse every day, but people are trying to solve something. And research is something where you always have to be a student. You should never behave like a professional, like saying that, okay, I'm just going to mint money at a very early stages of anything. So research takes a lot and a lot of time. Why research takes a lot and a lot of time? Because let me say you one of my scenario where my final year project was on photonics and I really didn't want to mess around with my knowledge of deep learning. So what I did was I took the data set which was generated from all the handle grip dynamometer. It was still a digits, still in a CSV file and I was able to play with it. And it didn't happen overnight. Trust me, it took me around 15 days, no sleep. And I was there in front of ma'am, I don't have any inference. I need some more data. And, and, and trust me, we even simulated some data. Then we had some projects done. This is how it is. So you can't <laughs> complain saying that, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to be like, or something. It's complex means it's complex. So let me just give you an introduction about like, let me just say, Arxive.org. This is actually one of the best places where you can go and get the papers. Why I'm saying you this, it's because initially when I went to engineering, nobody told me this. And I was searching whole of the Google on the internet and saying, where is the papers available? And this has everything stashed up. And if you see the matrices in which the papers are given out every single day, trust me, 150 to 200 papers are just thrown here every day. And it's freely accessible and anybody can cite the papers here. If you want to cite an IEEE paper, probably you have to buy it someday. Or else you should have used something called as Sci-Hub. It's, it's always there. So you guys can go here, just go, go here, just do this. Everything is solved. So you have to take the URL of that paper, just paste it here. Uh, let's not do this. I'm going to be hacked from tomorrow. That's it. So this is how it is. So if you want to, if you are like lazy like me and if you want to have sources very early in your access, just do this. Just go to Twitter, type A-R-X-I-V. You will have a list of papers which will be coming up in front of you. There, these are the list of organization which gives. I would say don't follow every, everybody and like trust me, everybody has a different story here to be said. And every... Everything like from quantum, from machine learning, from deep learning, computer language is something here for the NLP for high performance computing, human computer inference. Every subject is here. And if you can go to deep.org, ah, deep.ai, this is the one. This is one of the best places that you can go and get your data done. Like any paper is here. So groundbreaking papers pop up here and every single day you can keep yourself updated about this is what research is all about in the world simple as that and these are some of the sources where you can see and if you want anything further you can contact me through linkedin twitter any places that you have seen me verified you can contact me here so a reality check is learning path is going to be very very cumbersome and it took me a lot of time to understand, I'll say what. To me, to understand TensorFlow.org, I just went to, to TensorFlow 2.0 when it got released in 2019 around March, April, March, somewhere around that time. On the one side of my screen, I had TensorFlow.org open, the other side of the screen, I had Google Collab running. And it was a very cumbersome process. And in TensorFlow, you're actually developing a new architecture. You're not just calling a sequential model, just like Kira. So it's pretty complex. So the reality check is you need to be dedicated for five months because this is the path where you can really analyze, okay, this is where I might go wrong. And you can have a guide from anybody from Gooby or any person 
they are just going to give you an ample amount of insights for you and they have a lot and lot of web kata and other things and i'll also show about their id also it's very cool you guys can check out their id also so this is going to be give you the best version of what you are so in this five months what we can try to do is we can basically try to make you chase behind what's your niche is what should be your understanding about every problem statement if tomorrow you come and say i'm very good in computer vision i want to perceive something there good but we can throw you to a place where you have given a problem statement you are supposed to solve it and there will be a guide for you they will be mentoring you and there will be everything that will be happening and this requires a lot of studies trust me this requires a lot of studies what i said the hacks i or the deep dot ai that's pretty much enough but if you want to do further in your research or else in your problem statement that has been given from your guy who framed your career path i think probably a company or a firm probably you have to work beyond it like you can go to get a think of some frameworks which are already been built on such kind of things like i can show you that even here so then go to get okay let me just say one of the photonics projects that i actually wanted to search so you guys can go here there's a topic called as photonics so you guys can check out every little framework which has been already built will come up here so you guys need not have to do that hard work of okay where can i go and get this framework or where can i get these algorithms i'll also even show you sql learn as most of the algorithms which have been written and you need not have to do every inference and everything is free there so you guys can go there and check out and i'll show it in the demo as well so lot and lot of studies is required for sure and it's an unfinished syllabus and I, to be very frank with you there are people who have done machine learning masters like 2015 and afterwards and on the year of 2015 at the end after they pass out or something they had this new ways of uh, activation function like leaky relus and the other activation functions popped up and if you guys can go there and check out any other links probably there are going to be hundreds and hundreds of frameworks that are already built on all these things as well so you need not have to do so it's a never ending syllabus so keep this in mind and the importance of programming is i'll explain it now every hands on everything as a problem statement that comes up is automated somehow you are not allowing a human to make a decision so at the end of the day when you are explaining something to a client let me just say you are a freelancer you you guys have to just explain about your tiny bit of a project that you have done what you can do is you can collect data from different sources and you can start working there so this is how you can do it so let me just give you a quick intro about like gui.id this is a free online compiler where you don't have to go for this hassle of programming or anything you guys have it all in hand all the inputs and outputs can be plotted here so you guys need not have to worry about like hey friend oh this is in bash sorry for that so you guys can go there check out what it is and to be very frank this has been programmed there is no magic here the simple html there are all the tags which are the this console is something which i loved from gobi because when you do that you know they no websites directly put this we want to know what an xss is it's called as cross site scripting and it still uses python xss framework all right framework python if you check something like that we check something like this this is part of one of the hackers framework and it's always written in python and you need not have to think about everything that can go wrong because they are pretty good in whatever they are doing and they have done an amazing job by giving you all this ids for free and you guys can go and check out and everything is free here you need not have to download this python install it and just start running it everything has been given here so this is where i always say like give yourself an approach of understanding what it is so that thing what they have done is entirely a programming so programming is everywhere and if you think of any website it's been programmed 
So think about it. So say no to, I'm not going to program anything. See, there are other platforms like AutoML, or else you can think of something like uh, no low code, no code platforms. There are a lot of things. AutoML is something which is so cool these days. Everybody is going for this. I'm saying the people who didn't know how to code. So if you want to do an optimization to an extent where you are having 99.9% .9 accuracy or something, probably you are supposed to be doing a lot and lot of research. Uh, and also, meanwhile, when you think of all these kind of problem statement, right? I can give you some examples. Like you can think of your body as a data and you have a Fitbit in your hand. And there's an heartbeat which has been varying over a course of time. And you have other devices like anything. I can say not just my problem statement, leave that photonics part. You can think of bioinformatics. That is what I've also written here. So bioinformatics is something which is cool. Bioinformatics is basically combining your data insights that can be drawn using your data science tools plus the biology. I, I just want to have a chat with you guys. Like how many of you are PU in biology? Uh, PU in biology, PU in biology. Yes, just write bio, bio, bio in the chat. It would be great if you guys can be interactive because it will it will never be that boring. So yeah, bio. Sure. You know, this is what it is. This is what I would always say. You know, you know something and you want to have that data. Data is produced in every places. Every chunk and bits and pieces of any problem statement has a data in it. So you guys can go there, check out. Like, let me just say I'm doing a talk here. Like, I always had some sort of an issue with all my confidence, right? I, I'll say you what I did to improve my language. I went to a park, a very big park, which is very famous where all the foreigners come in. I went there and I became a guide. And this is how I started learning. And my English was very bad when I was in class 11 or class 12, but now it's pretty cool. People judge me because of that also. But that's fine. That's no big deal. And you can think of something as you as a learning person. And you can think of this machine learning as you're programming something to learn. And this is where your approach should be. And neural networks are something like, I can say, it's like you, I can say this. Uh, you programming a neural networks to have your insights and intent. Don't get insights. Anybody wants to, I guess, I think probably insights meaning. So insights is a capacity to gain an accurate and a deep understanding. That's what it is. And your intent is something which is cool. And I'll, this has never been achieved even from any of the advanced companies. Also, if you program an algorithm, which gives an intent for a neural network, trust me, it will be a groundbreaking research intent meaning. So intent is an intention or a purpose. So let me just say I'm programming something. I say Google co GitHub Copilot to just generate me a code for something like HTTP triggers or something. And that is done. But what I what if I told I want a production system like I know this is very complex, but I want something as cool as a progressive web app, which makes all the things easy. Like I'll say, what is progressive web app? Web app is something which is as good as you running on all platforms like Windows, Android, Mac, iOS, or anything. So this is where your progressive web apps comes into the picture. Probably it can't architect itself and it can't generate code for it. So there is a purpose which has always been solved, but intention of what your program has to do is it's never been programmed. If you guys can really do that, fair enough, you have a biggest problem statement in your hand. Is it any time I got from Okay, fine. You will have to contact the other people. So let me just give you a quick intro about all the things that I talk. All these problem statements, bioinformatics, genomics, all have data. And I'll show you some of the data sources, then I'll go on with some other ways in which you can 
understand okay this is where i need to get some data and something so let me just show you some so there's there are self driving cars lot of things so you guys can go and check out so i need you guys to focus here i'll give you a very quick introduction about what it is and how it is and this is what your data science problem looks like and every single day you start by understanding what your niche is you can think of natural language processing you can think of computer vision you can think of bioinformatics anything just get to know that you want to work on that for the rest of your life and it should be something like a disease like it should be something like a disease you should be happy because you are suffering because of that kind of a thing and focus all your efforts on that that is what is required and it doesn't matter there is an alternative for every language if you think of python is the best language today python is also being thrown off from some companies some companies are going more towards a programming called as called as an r programming language or else a go programming language people are building frameworks on that also so discuss your problem statement with subject matter experts so who are who is a subject matter expert an sme is a subject matter expert oh sorry not an enterprise in engineering so a subject matter expert is somebody who always gives you that required information for you to understand what is required to solve your problem statement a problem statement can be as simple as find me a path to go from point a to point b in a very less time and that's a problem statement and there you start collecting data and there is a subject matter experts like there are there are people who have really done phenomenal job in different problem statement like computer vision nlp ai deep learning you guys can go there check out what they are up for and if you think of something like make sure that you have the best advice i would just say take those advices keep it in your mind note it down and then research upon it and then you start implementing okay this can also be done this can also be done and then what make sure that you understand and give some time and why i'm saying you this it's because i'll say what really happened in my first year of engineering or somewhere i was not able to understand any of the things that they were talking about like i can say something like hey uh, there are hundreds of people who are coming up and saying me uh, radar technology is good should i go to radar technology fine but can i really find a problem statement that is so cool for me to understand and work with it i didn't find any so always give yourself a time always give yourself that one small understanding of okay this is what you really want to work and that will make a lot of difference and make sure that you know what is required to solve your problem statement that means like you want to learn tensor flow make sure that you learn tensor flow that is required because tensor flow documentation if i go to now tensor flow documentation it's pretty huge and if you think of problem statements like that probably yeah and also more of more over it's always so huge and i'll say you there are sub topics within that also and it's all difficult man you know you can't really understand everything in a day because nobody understands everything in a day and ask plenty of question and stop never stop working and stop nagging about things like okay this didn't work if it's taking 5 years to solve a problem statement it takes 5 years let me end up something by saying what it is all about so you know Uh, there is a there is a very great saying from a scientist who always told that if you torture your data more you will have a plenty of insights from it this is not in quotation this is just a brief intro about it torturing data is nothing like okay you are going to hit it down and break it into parts it's, it's like literally you are breaking into parts by using pro and also there is data visualization visualization is something which is very very cool i'll say you why visualization is something like you can think of like you have a set of data and you want to visualize it how what everything becomes in data for you 
So visualization is something which is cool. And I'll show you what is data visualization in a hands-on demo. And also this Saturday, there is an uh, always going to be something or other cool. So you're actually having an uh, Saturday batch, which is starting. And while at the end of the talk, I have to say this because on the Saturday, we'll always be talking about the AB series of the data science. So on the Saturday's batch, you guys can hop in and you can go there. And this is something which is very cool. And they have a lot and lot of things and you get a chance to explore something beyond it. So you guys can go there, check out what is happening with your data science world. You guys can start, join that uh, Saturday batch and we can start working on it. And of course, a digital portfolio through the GitHub will always be there for you. So just do that. And any questions, please do ask me now and I'll be going for this Q&A. So ask me anything. So I'll open my chat window so you guys can ask anything. Is there any certificate that I got from Ruby? Yeah, uh, right. Vishal, so we will be continuing. I'll also be giving you this one. Am I audible? Yeah, sure. Yeah, you are audible. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, guys, if you have any questions that you can yeah, sure. ask I based think, uh, on what uh, he has uh, been explaining, you can raise your hands or else uh, uh, you can just uh, drop a uh, question in the chat box. Sure. I think uh, if you guys don't have any questions, that's fine because how much time do I need to prepare to get enough knowledge? Uh, there is no answer for that because I am still learning. Okay, let me just say you the scenario. There is something called as Databricks. There is something called as Spark. Will you just really go and install Spark? Because that installation takes plenty amount of time. And instead of that, you have Databricks, which is free for you to access. Community edition, I'll show you. Where is this community edition of Databricks? Uh, community data. Oh, sorry. E dot data bricks. Wait, I, I can share you that. Community edition, login. You guys can go here, login. You guys can start working. So there are hundreds and hundreds of sources that you can think about when you're learning. So there is no end for it. There's no end point for it. But this five months of pathway that we are actually designing for you guys, it's basically an introduction to Whatever we are, we have sort of uh, a thing like, okay, this is the only thing. And of course, afterwards also you can stay connected with us and you can start working on it. So don't ask me that question because there is no end for learning because it's a dynamic thing. So can you say that any degree holder can learn? Oh, absolutely. I've seen now. Uh, people from BCom doing commerce. There is a tool called as Power BI. Fine, I can say about Power BI. So you guys can go and log in. This is a very great environment, this Databricks. This Databricks is also done by some commerce guys also. So you guys have plenty of leverage. And wait, something called as Power BI, or else Tableau is also there. Power BI desktop, you guys can download and you can start working. Power BI is an amazing tool. Instead of learning Tableau, wait. Tableau, there is a lot. So don't worry. Tableau is also good. But instead of learning and wasting the same amount of energy on Tableau, I would just say you guys can go and learn Power BI. All degree holders from different domains have hopped in. What is the first step to coming in data science? Uh, there is no first step, but the only first step is understanding your niche and getting to understand what is your requirement. If you want to go for NLP and you want to chisel your mindset in such a way that you are going to understand, okay, this is my problem statement. This is the data set that I have now, and I need to do all the techniques to get some inference out of it. You have to choose that and you have to understand it. So that's the first step. And the rest all is learning, learning, learning. And scope five years, like 50 years, 500 years, data science will be there. I'll say why. Uh, recently, uh, when I when, when there was an 
in when i joined all these kind of communities forums and everything i still had heard that there is only 5 terabytes of data but today world has reached that completely reached that barrier and there is uh into some into 10 to the power of 21 so there is huge data man you know there are there are huge data that zettabytes of data that you can think about so under 50 years this is going to be the same trend uh, the first step to come uh, there is nothing called as a first step as i told can you tell something about ai scientists uh, there are pretty amazing scientists there you can follow my twitter my twitter has a list of scientists that i always follow every single day and you can you can go to my website and you can think of like okay this is my profile and you guys can go here uh, follow ink not follow us follow ink you guys can go there there are hundreds of scientists who are pretty amazing so you guys can follow them hundreds of scientists man you know there are no one or two but everybody has an impact if you want some more insights i can say something about like alex kretarjian alex net was invented by and there are amazing tools i think if you guys want alex krejowski is an amazing guy if you want his paper alex krejowski 2012 was where they came out with this alex net you guys can see that this was the first paper that marked the standard for gpus being parallelly trained and this became a benchmark and nips is an organization called as neural ips i think i'll share this link with you guys so that you guys can copy all the things like this is what it is every day we always keep ourselves updated that's what i also do that's what other engineers also do probably it is something like of them for the for the entire whoever is working in private sector definitely they need to yeah, update, like, especially in it sector especially in it sector or any any sector you go you have to keep updating right. yourself there's so, no go for it Vishwa, I, yeah I, yeah I you know i'll have a short thing to uh, uh, interrupt you sorry so uh, for the audience it is uh, guys we would definitely like to have your feedback so i'm just uh, sharing you an form it would be really mm. great so that if you can put your feedbacks we can read them out and we will actually try to modify our requirements schedules according to that it will be really great if you can do that i'm just sharing the link so just a minute the form is already here so i hope um, uh, vishwa is actually taking a, a great chance here to explain everything else so i hope it has been received yeah and also let me just give you a quick intro about everything about this programming and everything right yeah, yeah. you know last time i showed you can i continue yeah 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 which one i have yeah, already drawn sure, sure. the form so uh, guys please go ahead and fill the details so that it will be easy for us to uh, deliver the best fill it, fill it. you you want okay thank you yeah sure. also you ishwa so the same print function i want to write it here so what i did was i didn't i didn't love the python syntax so what i did was i took the c syntax and i want to run it so look at what happens here so this is a definition function and it didn't work so let me just say what is this x all about so print x is already been written so what i do is and i want to call this function called as gui and in the meanwhile you should also understand this is actually a little advanced and i can't teach you python also today so just jump down to this function and i just want to give you a brief understanding of like what is this all about what you do is you draw a function and you start making some decisions and you start getting some inferences this is what it is all about so there are some functionalities which are already there and you are putting it in a function or a class and you are leveraging it that's where your frameworks comes into the picture what you saw in that tensor flow is similar and what i'll be showing is something which is as similar as that so i just want i just didn't love that print i just wanted to print it as true the print of function so what i do is i just do this so the output is gui and it took me 0.02131 seconds and it 
took only this much amount of memory that is the ram which has been allocated and things like that so this is how it is so it's not that complex it's the same function that you are drawing probably i can say x comma x and if i run it uh, page expired due to inactive oh uh, this is uh, this is always happening so gooby and the gooby came into the picture so this is what it is all about so at the end of the day what you do is you have some classes you have some functions and you start introducing some functionality within it so that you need not have to code that so this feature is what you call as reusability e of code not this so reusability of the code is something like you have this kind of a code which is not having any values that are embedded in it but it says ready to take some values in and make some decisions and this is where your all your inference all your frameworks comes up so this is what it is let me just give you a quick intro of some classes classes are something cool i have two notebooks which are already here so one notebook is what i created for all you guys no actually one two three notebooks actually three notebooks are already here so the, uh, what i gave that example is already there in this collab notebook i uh, know there is no prerequisites to join or anything you guys can just hop in for that session and what we do is we give you that path in which you can start learning that's it there's no big deal in that so you guys anybody can learn anybody can do data science a b c d yeah a b c d <laughs> and uh, i'll give you one of the things as classes wait so i'll show i'll even give you the example of that notebook as well so what i did for simple classes syntax is something as this i'll show you that in the google collab so class and i have it as a name and i have and dunder function this is where your dunder function comes so double underscore a function name is initialized in it is always there and ending up with double underscore and you start making this thing and trust me it's where you are actually initializing some value to it so hello class from bits or else i uh, we Gooby, there's a master class which is going on, so you guys can hop in and you can start learning. So I'll see what is happening here. So it's taking an initialized value. So I've given it a college name. So Gooby will be the college for you if you want to learn some data science. So now there's already a name variable that is installed with this college name. So it is initialized with this college name, and it's saying, okay, this is what name variable has to map to, and what it does is. it calls a function called as hello class and it has this variable called as self this is an actually a data type and everything so called as self in python class in python and you have this so that should be the output because hello and the name sun stable hello gubi yes the output came up and told hello gubi this is what it is all about so it's all that same old functions that you are mapping to something else and you are getting it back and seriously i didn't i didn't actually put anything as a name there but it was able to catch that okay he is he wants a gubi in that program and he is calling it here so i have to do my function this is what it is all about so a little complex part of all this programming and everything so let me just start with something called as panda so all your machine learning data science data scientists there are many alternatives for it there is jax for jax instead of tensorflow keras there are huge amount of frameworks that are already there and i would just say the functions are written in your command prompt and just by adding an exclamation exclamation mark and you are just adding the same old command at working as fine as so right so what i do is i want pandas so this is all for your notebooks where you are not getting any sort of 
package like pandas not installed tensorflow or numpy not installed this is what command is all about so if i run it pandas is there so it was not have to worry about anything so import pandas as pd you know as i showed wait as i showed there is an there is a name for it and it's being called over and over again so why to waste it so what really happened there is also the same thing so there is a package called as pandas and i don't want to write pandas pandas every day so what i did was as is a keyword which says instead of using this we can also map it to this variable as well so pd became pandas now so from pandas you are now importing data frames data frames is nothing special it's basically uh, taking in 10001 bits of data into whatever required format like it can be a form of a list a tuple or anything don't worry if it's like it's not that complex it's all still in the data types of pandas itself so don't worry about that so wait uh, data frames right data frames so uh, there are other tutorials but i would say documentation what i did was also from the documentation so, so don't worry about that so this is what your simple syntax is all about so a data frame is something which has a list embedded inside one variable that means if i call a variable t it has all the list that are associated with that data so that is where d is coming into the picture so column 1 column 2 everything has been mapped and this is a dictionary that they have called don't worry everything is in google just google it so what it does is let me not write it here because this will not get printed so there is a pd dot series and i have put in a list and so there is a pd dot series i have put it in a list so what happened is it's told it is one complete column which is there so when i write s and also keep in mind from left to right your indexing start from zero but from right to left your indexing start from minus 1 to the nth number n minus 1 nth number itself so you guys can think of me arranging it as an synchronized order here so you can also print out v oh yeah v is already printed so look at that so all the things about 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8, 9 lines got mapped here you can do something as this that it i do this and i do this and if i go and run it as a v here it starts running it's as simple as that so when you think of these kinds of programs this is what it is all about you should get some insights about what programming aspect is required now and then map it to the further theory or the practicality that you want to see so this is what it is all about so don't worry so if i say about help help is one sort of a function where it's going to not make you go and <laughs> fiddle around with the documentation it's going to give you all the things here so an odd function is going to be always there odd is a keyword by the way so if i do ord of some exclamation point you of a wait 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 i can do this so an ascii value of q is 1113 so this is where you are actually getting this unicode values the ascii code values and things like that so this is actually used in setting an uh, binary bit for your open cv also so at the end of the function a q is something there if i press q that value has to pop up in the ascii value there and it has just give so simple as that so all the things that i'll be teaching is some basic components of everything that is being clubbed in the full project so this is what it is all about so we had that and we want to do some head head is actually a command where you can see what is there in that data type and it gives an information about it or else you can also type something called as f.info you type this it actually gives oh sorry info is an attribute error so there is no thing 
So if you do this, wait, dot info. This is actually not. This is actually place where you are actually thinking, what is this? But this is where it is all about. So pd info or something. Let's just take a documentation. And us info. It was developed by Wes McKinsey. Wes McKinsey is also the best person in the world of data science. So there is something called as data frames and info. Oh. It has moved out of info buffer is equal to buffer. Sorry. Wait, people. You guys can see that this is where your data frame dot info. So there's a syntax called as df and a data frame is already taken in. Wait, I can give you that. It actually gives you every function. So let me just this let me just do it for the other ones actually i'll do it in the later oh god so s dot info memory says d i think probably this has no function here i think probably there are different version of pandas there's 1.25 lot of things are popping up so don't worry about that thing so head is something a command which actually says okay this is what your data consists of tail is something which is saying that okay last part of your data consists this see the fact that zero got eliminated from that so tail is something which is cool so you guys think of this data set so this is a shorter version of the data set that is here so you guys can look at this data set simple as that it's still a data set which is helps it, which is in a form of an csv file and somewhere in the cloud also on the local file it's just calling so delimiter is something which you are doing you are separating this value and you are running it so that entire thing has got mapped to an ufo here. so when you think of this huge data set being seen by you in one day it's impossible right so this is here you can think of like okay this is where we are making some changes in our life and data science is something so cool that it helps you make some decision and it helps you make you understand what is actually supposed to be needed and uh, when you call off all these frameworks and all these things see when you think of drop dot head there was no function because drop is not an already a function which is already there or else it's not a data type which is there so when it seems sure sure i think uh, we'll take the q a and we'll actually do that and numpy is something which is there for you guys where numpy is actually doing the same thing that we did using the data frames and we are analyzing everything that is required here so our which is the maximum argument that we can see. So there is four, there is five. So there's a shape of five and arg of A is something which is so cool. So max arguments, where are they and what are they about? And this is where your numpy has in leverage. And one simple trick about your uh, numpy or any framework is something like in Jupyter notebook, there is a functionality called as this. So np.arg max, if I do this, if I do the control shift, there's an entire documentation which comes up here, says, okay, this is what you are supposed to be doing. And every documentation, everything pops up here. So all these notebooks I'll be giving you guys in here and I'll explain this last part. Machine learning is very simple where you're defining a problem, preparing your data, evaluating algorithm improve the results that's what you do if you are having 50 percent accuracy you can't give a model to the world just like that what you can do is you can give that model to the world and now start inferring so this is where you can improve some results and then when you think of something like inference that is being made i took an iris data set it's simple data set 
Iris data set information. So it's actually a public data set. So you, you can just go out. There's an Wikipedia page which has already been made. So this is actually from uh, UCL, I think so, UCA or something. This is a pretty amazing data set. By Kelly, when we all came in for all the data science, this is what the program was all about. So you can go there, check out what is that. And what I'm doing is I'm taking the maximum values, minimum values, plotting it as one sum data sets. And I'm actually giving this function of PLT where I'm using matplotlib as one such function and I'm taking it into consideration. Then the first three PCA differences is something like an algorithm, which we'll be talking in the later part of the series and whatever we are taking into consideration. And when you think of something like an algorithm, which is already there, SKLR asset, SKLR has huge amount of data sets, huge amount of algorithms which are already pre-programmed. You guys can go there and you can see what has been trained and what has been inferred and everything afterwards will be in a form of a plots. This is how your data science problem is all about. So I have a lot of visualization, a lot of analytics to do. And I'll give you this notebook as well. So you guys can check out what is there here in this notebook. It's in a view format, it will not be in the edit format. So you guys can go there, check out what is there. That's it from my side, folks. I think I ran out of time because lot to explain in one hour, man, you know.